Yeah, so um, so after considering the Lord Jesus, how he ministered the word, so we looked at, um, you know, as New Testament ministers who are living on this side of the cross, the new dispensation, um, with the Holy Spirit indwelling us and with the written scriptures, you know, what are some things to consider uh, as we prepare ourselves, like to minister the word? So we looked at several things. And um, in the end, I, I think towards the end, we looked at, uh, you know, how we, um, the, our personal walk with God is very important um, because we see that uh, um, in the life of, uh, especially with Peter and John, when they were at the temple, that people, um, the, the high priests and the, all the scribes and everyone who were there, they noticed that. One thing they noticed was that they had been with Jesus because they, they were untrained men, they were uneducated men, but um, the way they spoke, and, and Peter was also you know, quoting from from scripture when he was uh, talking to them, and and the way uh, he, they spoke with so much boldness, they realized. Uh, scripture says that they realized that they had been with Jesus. Right? We see that in Acts chapter four and uh, verse thirteen. So, um, so that that is something which is very very important, uh, necessary for us. Where we are able to speak with boldness, speak with conviction. Um, and it's uh, something real to us, you know, something that is that we are experiencing, that we are receiving the life of God. We are experiencing, you know, what He's pointing to, what He's showing us. Um, we are we are learning that, and we are understanding that, and then we are uh, sharing that. Okay. And uh, and lastly, we also saw that um, uh, you know about revelation. That continuous revelation leads to continuous ministry. You know, we receive revelation, and uh, it could be an adding on. To something that has already been revealed, uh, you know, something adding on to the truth, or it could be something, you know, totally different, totally new, right? Um, and also, we saw that without anointing uh, and uh, enlightenment and illumination and revelation, um, you know, the scriptures, when we expound it or when we communicate it, that will be just something that is from our natural mind, which is which is also good, right? But there is so much more because we are called to, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is something that is for us as uh, believers, as New Testament ministers, that the Holy Spirit wants to lead us in these manner, in, in this manner. He wants to open up our minds, open up our hearts to the hidden treasures of Scripture. And um, especially, you know, when it comes to the work of the Spirit, uh, which is praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. One Corinthians fourteen. One Corinthians fourteen talks about that, where we, when we pray in a tongue, we pray the mysteries of God. Okay, mysteries are things that are hidden uh, for us, for us to discover, for us to walk in. So these um, mysteries of God are revealed to our spirit by the Holy Spirit when we pray in the spirit, when we pray in tongues. So these are ways by which we, you know, we. We walk in revelation, we walk in understanding, we walk in the anointing, um, and we minister. Right? We, even as we prepare, we lean on all these uh, in order to receive the word, in order to minister the word. Right. So let's look at uh, you know uh, some more uh, as New Testament ministers. You know what is the equipping that is uh, that is there for us? Right? The equipping that is there for us as New Testament ministers, and uh, we're just going to look at the one. Uh, uh, passage of scripture that is in Second Corinthians chapter one. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter one. And uh, okay, let's. Uh, sorry, uh, chapter three, verse one. Um, three and verse one. Okay. Um, let's just read through verse one to twelve. And see, um, you know, what is it that we can learn from uh, learn to be New Testament ministers as New Testament ministers? What is it? What are some things that we can learn from this passage? Okay, so verse one: Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Verse two: You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, 
you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who has also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of the countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. And that passage continues with an example of Moses and so on, right? So, um, so he's writing here, Paul is writing here um, to the Corinthians and he's talking about something very important as ministers of the new covenant right um, and he's saying okay as ministers of the new covenant he's referring to himself right uh, and his team and as ministers of the new covenant this is what we have been made and uh, and this is how you are this is how we relate to you so he's talking to the believers in the Corinthian church okay so if you look at verse 2 okay so um, so uh, the, the context is this, you know, he's saying, you know, do we need letters of condemn, uh, co uh, commendation or do we need com letters of commendation from you or do we need to give you, okay, like need to give you in the sense, you know, you know our reputation, you know, uh, you know, how we were, you know, he is referring to all that because they were not really, uh, Paul felt that, okay, they were not considering them as, uh, yeah, there were other apostles, false apostles, and you know they were giving them a lot of respect, and uh, even though they were they were actually ministering, and they were out to uh, get they they were out to get what they could actually from the people, and not really give. Um, so the intention, their motives, the attitude, everything was everything was wrong. Um, so here, that is why he's talking about you know, do we need to give you? letters of commendation or do we need letters of commendation from you right so in verse 2 he says you are our epistle written in our hearts known and read by all men so he's saying that you are our epistle in the sense you are your life um, everything about you it's like a letter an epistle a letter and you are written in our hearts okay so you are written in our hearts so uh, so that's the first thing that we see that um, well people must be in our hearts right as um, as uh, ministers of the new covenant as we you know when it comes to preaching when it comes to comes to ministering um, with the word the people must be in our hearts so what does that mean that means that uh, um, you know the objective is that people need to be edified and people need to have a special place in our hearts um, we cannot be detached isolated uh, totally distanced from people um, you know as as ministers okay so in the sense you know some might be called to be evangelists like you're in a different uh, different seg i mean you're facing different audiences all the time you know, maybe you're traveling and equipping and at the same time you know while it is not possible to know the congregation know the audience it is not possible to know each and every one of them but do they have a place in your heart in the sense do you esteem them do you care for their well-being spiritual well-being and otherwise uh, do you respect them honor them do they have a place in your heart or is it is the message and the ministry so detached from what you're doing okay from the people whom you're ministering to 
Actually, it's a very important question. So because um, so this is something that Paul says. Paul says that you know you are written in our hearts. You are in our hearts. Okay. Um, we in in other words, he's saying we we want you to benefit from this. We want you to receive this word. Uh, we want you to uh, we want to have we we have your best in our minds. You know all that would apply, right? Um, you know, if if you want to think of uh, an example of a minister in the Bible who really did not have people in their hearts, you know, he with great um, hesitancy, you know, he with dragging his feet. Uh, we can think of Jonah, right? So we'll see, see that Jonah was well. He went there finally, and then he preached, but then he he was not really expecting people to repent. He was not really expecting people to turn their hearts to God, even though that is what the message was. Right? That was a that was a message, you know, to the people of Nineveh, um, uh, to repent, to turn back to God. In fact, it was a message of condemnation. He says, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. But the people repented in sackcloth and but uh, but it actually angered Jonah. Right? The fact that people should repent because they were they were the Ninevites were the enemies, right? And um, and they had done a lot of harm uh, to them. So it says in chapter four, Jonah it says it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So when we look at the previous verse, why did it displease Jonah? Because God actually uh, relented from the disaster because he saw their works, the fact that they had repented. So you see, Jonah is, you know, he though he preached and everything, he's so detached from the from the message. He so I mean, from the people to whom he took the message, right? So, uh, so. So we see here that Paul is saying people must be written in our hearts. It's so important, right? Do we pray for the people? Do we um, uh, have a burden for the people? Uh, do we want the people to receive the word and to change? Or is it about us? You know, uh, is it about us wanting to preach a good message? Is it about us wanting to make an impression um, and not about the people themselves who are the recipients of the word, right? Okay. So the second thing that we see in verse three. Is that Paul is saying? First, he's saying, you know, you are our epistle; that uh, you are actually in our hearts. The second thing is, says, you are an epistle of Christ. Okay, you are an epistle of Christ, meaning that if if God were, were to write a letter, you know, we just need to look at your life, a letter to others, a message for others. You know, your life, your change. And everything you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart so so here is, is saying that um, you know you are an epistle and you are ministered God is written into your hearts and you are an epistle and he's written not with ink not with natural means but by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so God, uh, you know, as a minister of uh, of the New Testament, we 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 understand that we are in God's hands. He uses us to minister to people, and uh, that ministry, even though we are human vessels, that ministry is something where the Holy Spirit writes into the lives of people. You know, it's it's not really our eloquence, our articulation our cleverness and all that but God uses all this all that um, as ministers but he writes by the Holy Spirit into the hearts of people so that is where the permanent change comes that is where transformation happens because God writes upon people's hearts and we are ministers we are servants in God's hands uh, he uses us definitely uh, we are his uh, instruments, but he writes on people's hearts by the Spirit. 
Okay, so we see that we are always dependent on him as ministers, right? Um, which is the next thing, you know, which is in verse 4. It says, and we have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, from being us, from, sorry, anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, our sufficiency, our ability, our dependence is from God. We are not depending on ourselves. You know, if you look, if you consider, you know, if you, if you just look at it, Paul and his missionary journeys and the churches being planted, people being raised up, the team of ministers um, who, who were raised up, who were with him. If you consider all that, you know, and on Paul saying that, you know, uh, we are not sufficient, nothing has been, so, we're not sufficient of ourselves. And I think we need to take it seriously, right? So Paul is saying this is our sufficiency to do this work, to raise these churches, to raise these leaders uh, is from God. Is from God, so um, our sufficiency is from God, which, which again is a very liberating thing, which takes a lot of pressure off us, takes a lot of pressure off us. You know, looking at the ministry and saying, this sufficiency, the sufficiency to carry out this vision, the sufficiency to, uh, you know, to to do this work, uh, the sufficiency to reach the city, to touch the lives of people, is from God. He makes us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Okay, so that is that is something that he says, you know, and made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Okay, which is the next thing that we are ministers of the new covenant. He makes us sufficient. Look at verse six. It says, um, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Okay, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Uh, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So we are ministers of the new covenant, which is life giving. Uh, it's it's not of the letter or of the law, but of the spirit. It is of grace, and it is life giving, life producing. Right? And we are ministers of this new covenant, which is ministers of the life giving spirit. Okay. So um, and, and then he goes on to say. Okay, which is the next thing, which is that the ministry of the Spirit is more glorious, is much more. Right? He's saying he, he does a lot of comparisons, right? Uh, was it seven to eleven? You know, uh, if what was made glorious, or even what was made glorious, had no glory in this respect, because of the glory that expels, excels. Sorry, um, uh, and he talks about the ministry of death. And then he compares it to uh, the ministry of uh, uh, ministry, uh, ministry, the glory that was passing away to glory that is, uh, which is there, which is more. And the ministry of the spirit, uh, ministry of the condemnation, compares that with ministry of righteousness. Thanks. So he's saying, so yeah, so don't ever, in other words, you know, uh, just try to understand what the ministry of righteousness is which the ministry of the spirit is don't ever slip back into that don't ever slip back into uh, ministering for example you know uh, uh, not focusing on the cross you know sometimes we do that right we uh, maybe we've heard messages right people take the law and uh, you know, uh, even if, if it's uh, you know something from the new covenant or something from the you know, new testament we preach it as if it's we are ministers of the law okay a set of do's and don'ts a set of uh, you know uh, things to be followed do this or else you know do this or else well there is a place for uh, Talking about the severity of God, okay. The goodness of God. We need to talk about the severity of God. We always come back to the cross and what was achieved on the cross, what was changed because of the cross, and uh, what has been released to us because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? Because simply because we are ministers of the new covenant. Right. Uh, never forget that. For the letter kills, the spirit gives life. But the spirit 
actually quickens the word. Okay. Um, the spirit quickens the word. He highlights, he takes the word and he gives life. Um, it is not death producing. It is not condemnation, but it is actually producing life. Well, that was leading up. You know, we, when we read Romans, of course, when we study Romans, we see the benefit of what? What is the benefit of the law? Well, it was a tutor. It was keeping us, and to, and, uh, and he's talking to the Jewish audience. You know, he's saying it was keeping us. Um, it, yes, it was a set of do's and don'ts and all that, but it was keeping us, bringing us to a place, and pointing to Christ, that great sacrifice. And um, now we are ministers of the new dispensation. We we have this righteousness which is apart from the law, which is through faith in Christ. Okay, so uh, never forget that, you know, because uh, in our ministering, in our zeal for ministering, sometimes we might hear some message and then say, wow, that is nice. I need to preach that. I need to share that. But is it bringing people under condemnation or conviction, right? Is it life producing? Because the truth uh, is always life producing, right? Uh, truth always liberates, and the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, guides us into all truth. Right? So, so that's something for us to um, understand. Okay, then we see the ministry of the uh, Spirit is more glorious, which means it's a greater manifestation of God's working as well, which means that we don't restrict ourselves to mere words, but we open ourselves and minister uh, the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, The life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. So it is not just, um, you know, just mere words, but we go with the expectation that the God who gave us the words will also watch over His word to perform that word and accompany and give evidence to that word with signs, wonders, and miracles, which means, you know, we are opening up to the, you know, the possibility we are uh, of encounter we are with God, with the life-giving Spirit, who will accompany and confirm the word with signs, wonders, and miracles. So, the, you know, it's a, it's really, uh, it's real liberating, and also it is, uh, you know, so real that the God of the scriptures is God of the here and the now and he wishes to speak and he wishes to intervene and he wishes to do certain things and change certain things in the here and now you know in people's hearts in people's you know their lives in their bodies in their minds in their you know everyday situations right so um, uh, so a greater manifestation of God's glory a God's revelation you know uh, his power minister that and and Paul uh, in that uh, in verse twelve he says therefore we have great boldness um, since we have such hope we use great boldness of speech so he is he saying you once you understand that we are ministers of the new covenant once you understand that you know there's something more glorious than the ministry of the letter or the ministry of condemnation you know uh, so it was a glory that was it was glorious and it was a glory that was passing away and now we have something which is much more glorious right so we have such hope and that hope gives us so much boldness and courage uh, and clarity so uh, we see all that in um, in this passage here, right? So uh, so the thing is this that it, it is it talks about this passage talks about our our perception, our attitude towards uh, the people, uh, and also our understanding of who actually brings about change. Uh, it also uh, you know shows us okay where our dependence is where our sufficiency is right and also our understanding that uh, we are ministers of the life giving life producing spirit and it's much more glorious so don't slip back into the law and so don't slip back into a ministry of condemnation bring people or expose people facilitate people to have an encounter uh, 
with the life-giving spirit right and um, and because we have such hope we can use great boldness of speech and uh, we can be courageous and we can be bold in this right and uh, so that is something that we see. Okay. So now, the, while when we uh, while we minister the word, uh, now it could have different objectives. Okay. Say, so what do we mean by that? Now, it, the end result uh, uh, could be, you know, yes, it is always productive. It's fruit producing, but it it brings right uh, different objectives. Right. So let's look at that. So we when we look at one Corinthians chapter uh, fourteen and verse six where Paul is writing about the gifts and he's saying, you know, but now brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you? And, the, and he writes about, you know, four different things. Unless I speak to you by, uh, either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying or by teaching. Okay, by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying or by teaching so which means that um, you know if 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 i communicate this then you are being profited in other words that's what it means right uh, uh, what shall i profit you unless i do this so which means that uh, if I, if i if i do this you are being profited right there is benefit uh, and you are being edified right but if I'm going to be praying in tongues, and uh, he's talking about praying in tongues without the interpretation, then it's not going to really bring in much edification to you. You know, before that he says, okay, if I pray in a tongue, you know, my spirit prays and I, I'm being edified. Um, all that is true. While that is true um, to a congregation, when I'm bringing a message, uh, if it's going to be a message in tongues now without the interpretation, then it's going, it's not going to be. Uh, helpful but what will be helpful and what will be beneficial is if I bring a message and if I speak to you by revelation okay so we so we saw what revelation is revelation is um, the elimination of truth by the Holy Spirit it is revealing of something uh, so that has been hidden for us to be found right um, God has kept these mysteries these revelations these treasures um, and it is so that we might find. It is so that we might, uh, we might. Uh, it's kept there so that it might be revealed for us. Okay. Um, so we see that um, you know, one Corinthians chapter one, where, uh, uh, sorry, chapter two and verse ten. Uh, if you read nine and ten, as it is written. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the searches, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Okay, so it says that, um, you know, what, uh, yeah, I has not seen, nor ear uh, heard, ear heard, or not have entered into the man heart of man the things that this God has prepared for us but uh, it doesn't stop there well God has revealed them to us okay so this revelation so there is a you know when we preach when we communicate we can bring a revelation of truth that has been hidden okay and which has been eliminated to us by the Holy Spirit so so it brings elimination to people's hearts you know it's just it's suddenly it's like unlocking certain things you know some some things make sense i remember you know listening um to uh, you know uh, someone many years ago and it was it was actually on apologetics really you know he was uh, uh, he was talking about um, uh, about on apologetics and he was talking to us about apologetics and and suddenly you know yeah, that was the first time i'm i'm just you know receiving this revelation uh, about uh, you know god saying let us ma make man in our image and i've never noticed that before he's saying you know the trinity being mentioned there let us make man in our um, in our own image that the fact that jesus was there at creation and all that right so it was a revelation you know it's something that the holy spirit testified witnessed in my heart and saying hey this is uh, this is uh, something that you don't know, and then this is something that has been revealed. So there, are, there is revelation. So you can, when we bring in revelation, right, we, 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 it benefits people, it profits people.
Right. Um, second thing could be knowledge, meaning gnosis or spiritual understanding, spiritual information. Okay. Now that is also beneficial. You know, it, uh, we cannot say that only revelation by the spirit um, is beneficial. Well, spiritual information, which means principles, precepts that are there in scripture, right? spiritual bringing spiritual understanding, spiritual information to things that are there in scripture. Uh, it could be a principle, it could be a, you know a precept, uh, and we are bringing um, uh, that understanding. Okay, so revelation, knowledge, prophesying, bringing a you know a here and now word, something that is inspired by the spirit. Okay, now when we prophesy, it could be a word of uh, something that is edifying, something that is uh, encouraging, and something that is comforting to the people. Like right? one Corinthians fourteen talks about he who prophesies speaks speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men okay. so we are speaking to people as inspired by god um so you know you know prophecy is speaking to man uh, god speaking to man through man so god who knows the hearts and minds of people who knows the needs of people speaks to people addresses their needs it could be in the area of edification they need to be built up it could be exhortation they need some encouragement right? refreshing or it could be in the area of comfort you know they they're going to through stuff they're going through some difficult seasons and they need the comfort and the assurance of god right so edification exhortation comfort so god who knows their hearts those who needs uh, knows and needs uh, 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 those who, god who knows the needs of people you know, speaks to man through man right he uses us he speaks to us to our hearts to to share it and then that is also beneficial to the people okay so you bring an inspired word okay then uh, the fourth thing that Paul mentions here is also that, uh, you know, uh, uh, he says, okay, this is what it is, by knowledge or by teaching. Okay, so we know what teaching is. Right? Teaching is ex expounding, explaining, uh, and, uh, you know, educating uh, people. It, it takes people from ignorance to elimination, right? Um, Teaching does, uh, in doing that, teaching also establishes people in the truth, establishes the hearer in the truth. Okay, now, this is very important right? for one to just not just know the truth and be acquainted with the truth and just forget the truth, but you know, teaching establishes people. They are questions, their reasonings. And everything is uh, the questionings are questions are answered. There, you know, the, the reasoning and everything that they might have. Everything is uh, there's an illumination that happens. There. So therefore, there are lessons learned that that establishes people, makes firm their lives, their understanding, everything in the truth. Okay, uh, it makes a person strong. It makes a person. Uh, spiritually strong. So you see these various things. Okay, so as a New Testament minister who has people uh, who's asking God, okay, God, you write people upon my hearts. You know, I want to have uh, a real burden. I, I don't want to just minister in a very clinical manner, just be done with it and go, but I really want to minister. Minister out of compassion, the way you did, Lord. You had people in your heart, you reached out in compassion, minister, or put people in my heart, right? Um, putting people in our hearts could also mean, right, uh, okay, God, uh, which group or where do you want me to minister, right? The, the, the bigger picture of call, the bigger picture of um, calling and mission and all that, uh, even life's calling, right? So whom do you want 
to minister and where do you want to take me to minister and all that so we could pray saying that god you know you um, you speak to me in this manner you write you know you write people upon my hearts and um, you know like we uh, saw okay god you minister to people's lives through your spirit because that's where lasting change happens right um, and uh, sufficiency ability you know i'm dependent on you i'm leaning on you i'm a minister of the life giving spirit so we consider all that and we look at different ways that it can be brought now you know if it's just revelation it is not we know that it can be a you know mix of that right it can be teaching and it can be revelatory teaching it can be teaching and it can have you know pro the prophetic as an element in it and so on so revelation knowledge uh, prophecy prophecy or prophesying and teaching so these are beneficial for the hearer so these could be some uh, objectives in ministering the word and as uh, New Testament ministers. Okay, fine. So let's look at um, one more. I will just start this and we'll have time to just uh, spend a little bit of time on this. Okay, so, so while we are preparing a message, okay, what are some things to consider? Okay. Now, while we are preparing a message, you know, sometimes it's like uh, we are just blank. Okay, God you know uh, I've taken this invitation I've accepted this invitation and they've also given me the freedom saying whatever is on your heart you preach God God help me God, what is it you know where do I start the slate is blank right um, so for us to understand certain things now we won't get into a state of panic. Oh God, I need to say something. I need to do something. What, what? Nothing seems to make sense. We don't have to get to that place of panic. Um, so we understand a few things. Okay. So, so here are some things to look at. Okay. So first thing is that God draws out what we have put in. Okay. God draws out like how we draw water out of a well. Right. There's something that things that we have put in or God has put in what we have received like what we have worked on uh, in our own lives uh, what we are walking in in our own lives God draws that out okay so the responsibility is really to put in the responsibility is to intentionally receive and to walk in the truth um, what he has put in so that's our responsibility right um mark chapter 4 talks about uh, you know i just go back to that again because it talks about you know use what measure you use it'll be measured to you so we go to god with a great measure big measure and we say lord you, know, you fill my heart um colossians um again colossians chapter 3 talks about uh, the word and how we need to have a rich deposit of the word okay 316 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord okay uh, let the word of christ dwell in you richly uh, ephesians 5 um, uh, ephesians uh, sorry ephesians chapter uh, yeah uh, 5 again verse 18 talks about but be filled with the spirit so these are all talk about putting in something a rich deposit of his word being filled with the spirit uh, meditating on the word of god you know receiving from him okay so that's something not necessarily with the intention of wanting to preach a message okay so that's the thing right some sometimes we, we just go to god and say god I, I want to i want to do this you know what what is it uh, rather than that, to consistently you know, allow God to put in, allow God uh, or intentionally pursue God, God uh, write your word upon my heart. Let there be a sowing of the word in us, in, in our hearts. Let there be a infilling of His Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. So if that is the objective, and when that is a thing that we are doing consistently, then God draws out, you know, 
he draws out and uh, yeah, in the book of Isaiah we see that he gives a word in season to him who is weary okay but he awakens my ear to hear as a learned right so which means that uh, even as I as I seek him uh, as I pursue him you know, he does something in me he puts something in me he causes me to hear okay so he draws out what we have put in okay um the second thing for us to um, also consider is to you know ministering rhema versus ministering the logo i mean it's, it's actually logos uh, it says there's a typo there uh, it should be logos right so ministering rhema versus ministering logo. So what does that mean? That means that okay, teaching the principles and the precepts, and uh, you know highlighting what the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, highlighting, quickening. Right. Uh, while we can we can do both. Right. When we were when we were considering, you know, we're going to look at um, the different types of uh, sermons. Also, you know, when we looked at the different types of preparation. Right, or uh, different types of uh, study, we saw that there were certain, you know, especially when it's a book study, okay, we're going to be doing a systematic study. We're not going to pick and choose, right? We are just right from the start, beginning of the chapter till the end of the chapter. It's going to be a systematic study. Now, that is that would be, you know, ministering the logos where we are doing a study of the entire of the entire book but while we are studying the entire book you know the holy spirit would draw would prompt us to emphasize certain truths for that day right while the highlight is on well the focus is on the entire book right but certain passages and certain truths or certain scriptures the holy spirit emphasizes and uh, it could be the you know the word for someone there um so be sensitive to that. Be mindful of that. Right? So ministering the Rhema word and ministering the Logos, both have their place and both have their uh, impact. Right? And, um, you know, the, the, the well, the uh, Logos, it, it, it results in a person and a believer who's you know, informed, educated, aware of the truth. Right, which is important again, and established in the truth. And uh, when the when there is a quickening of the word, when there's a rhema word uh, from the from the logos, that is also has its place. You know how you know Ephesians chapter six talks about that. You know the the a sword of the spirit in spiritual battle, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the word used there is rhema. So. When you minister the rhema of God, now that's going to be the sword of the spirit in, in a believer's hand, right? And um, you minister what is you you minister probably out of the logos, and you ministered what is quickened by God to your heart, and you minister, and then the Holy Spirit quickens that to their heart, and um, that is the rhema, the sword of the spirit for them, right? It's a timely word. It's a word used in battle. Right. So ministering logos versus ministering uh, the rhema, okay. depending on the Holy Spirit. Again, okay, a word in season, a quickened word, the prophetic word. Okay, so we depend on the Holy Spirit. So as we are preparing, uh, understanding, knowing fully well that you know these are some ways that God speaks, and uh, it could be a word in season for someone. It could be a quickened word, which is going to be a you know, word in battle, it will be an encouraging word or a prophetic word bringing edification, exhortation, and comfort. So it comes from our dependence on the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay. Uh, fourth thing, very important study the word. Right. So we looked at, uh, you know, when we are going to do a word study or a topical study uh, or, a, you know, a, a, or an inductive study or a, you know, a book study, we are. Uh, you know how would you study it you know how is it different from just reading because you are going deeper you are considering you know some of these words that you may you know you may just skip over sometimes but you're looking at the meaning of it and the way it is used and uh, and the different uh, you know the understanding behind it 
So study the word. Um, so that gives us a better understanding of the context that gives us depth in knowledge and understanding. And that's something, again, you know, if you look at the first point, that's something the Holy Spirit will draw out. Okay, that's something that we have put in, and he's going to draw that out. Okay, so uh, so unless we study, unless uh, you know, we go beyond a casual reading of the word, now how will the Holy Spirit draw that out? Okay, while while there is benefit in casual reading, uh, you know, uh, because it is the word, it is life giving, and we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us who inspires us, but we can go beyond that. We can do more, right? When we study intentionally, study the word of God. And there is much benefit from that as well, personally and for us as ministers, right? Okay, so we are looking at okay, preparation to minister, right? Guidelines. So study the word. Okay. Uh, next one is have a single topic or a single theme. While uh while we are putting together a message, okay, we are talking about the presentation now, or putting together, um, before the presentation, sorry, putting together what God is leading us, the inf uh, you know, all the thoughts and the, uh, and the things that he has already given to us. And so we need to have a single topic and a single theme that we are talking about, okay? Um, and one single direction that we are going in. Now, the topic could have, Various subtopics, obviously. It could have uh, you know certain key points that you're going to be addressing, but let it be you know aligned to one direction rather than you know scattered. Um, why? Why do we say that? Because it will uh, it helps in, in in retaining certain things that we are learning. Uh, the, uh, the congregation or the audience is learning and uh, it helps to apply those things it brings focus right it enables to when you bring focus it's it uh, highlights the importance of it and uh, it, it helps people to um, retain it right as we are as we are learning it aids in learning it helps to retain it with the intention of applying the truth okay that's the objective okay if i if I learn something, if I receive something, it is so that I might apply it and walk in it and see the, you know, the, experience the power of it, experience the truth of it, right? Okay, so um, while it can have many subtopics or key points, you know, have it uh, as one direction. Okay. Substantiate key points with scriptural references. Now, this is, uh, again, uh, what, what is our reference point? You know, in in all of our communication of truth, what is our reference point? In the sense, what are we referring to? What isn't there in the background that we are pulling out of? It is the Word of God. Right? We are substantiating, you know, every truth, everything that we put forth, saying you need to do this, or this is what God thinks, or this is what God says. We substantiate that. Substantiate meaning, you know, you you give evidence of that. You establish that whatever you're saying with scripture. Right? It is not, or one can also say it's an it's opinion. But the fact is, people go back, they retain something, they keep something, and it 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 also does something to them when it's scripture. When we uh, lead them to the truth when we when we establish with the truth of God's word, right? Okay, so we'll stop here and then we'll continue uh, in our next class. Um, thank you so much. God bless. Bye bye.